guys welcome back to another one today we're putting together a uh, absolute monster of a buckshot shell it's four pellets of double lot in a two and a half inch 410 monster i know but the components we're using are real simple it's just a again two and a half inch 410 shell this one is a brand new prime fiocchi got these from ballistic products the clay buster clone of the winchester double a 410 wad I love this wad, one of my favorites. And, uh, well, for an overshot card anyway, I'm just using a piece of a 20, uh, 20 gauge fiber cushion wad. Not really an overshot card, but we'll make it work. I don't have any 410 overshot cards. Ballistic products, buffer. This is mix number 47, but I use all three of their buffers pretty much interchangeably, although I do like their ITX or BSB buffer the best it's the same thing itx it has been rebranded to bsb for the powder well hodgden little gun one of my favorite powders and we're gonna fold crimp this shell today i don't have a 410 press so i am using omv dies for my lee load all i've done a video on this previously which will be much more detailed if you guys haven't seen it go watch it it's uh it's a good one yeah, these are just OMV press, the uh, dies from it. Specifically, I have the pre-crimp, the middle crimp, and the crimp finisher, again, from the OMV press. A viewer of the channel, a good friend of mine, his name is Martin, sent me the uh, OMV dies, and it has a rubber washer, for lack of a better term, that just slides up in either of the two pre-crimp tubes on the Lilo doll to act as a... Uh, 410 lee load all basically guys i've been loading a lot of 410 lately like uh, i've done probably 50 shells in the last two days which is a lot for me uh neither one of us me or josh really load that much 410 but again lately i've been loading a lot of it because this thing is so fun to use that i've just become addicted to loading 410 now the powder charge we need is 12 grains this will be roughly a half ounce load total. There's our 12 grains right there. As always, double check it. And yes, we have 12 grains. If you guys want to see more 410 range videos, just let us know. We've been doing quite a few slug videos with them lately, but nothing really with buckshot or birdshot loads. But we can absolutely do that if you guys want to see it. Just let us know. But the wad is, again, the Clay Buster clone of the Winchester AA410. Got that seated. Now, well, we just need four pellets of 33 cal double watt buck. These are tumbled and polished right out of the Lee 18 cavity mold. Drop these right in. Give them a little nudge with Gary Kasky's wad tamper. Facebook.com slash Gary.D.Kasky if you want any of his tools. Gary makes some awesome stuff. But lastly, we just need our buffer. Again, Ballistic Products, mix number 47. They don't take much at all with 410. Just a little bit. Like maybe a quarter of this 2.2cc uh, dipper full of uh, worth of buffer. So usually when I'm loading buckshot, I say the top row of pellets about halfway covered with buffer. Well, in this case, it's top pellet about halfway covered with buffer. Now our makeshift overshot card. Again, this is just a thin slice of a 20 gauge fiber cushion wood set that right on top and again use the wad tamper just to make it flat and even and then we're going to fold crimp this and as you can see that functions pretty well as an overshot card simple again i don't have any 410 overshot cards so i made do with what i had and it works now how this works is well basically it's just a 410 lee load all same thing you do for any other gauge, 12, 16, 20, or in my case, 10. I do have a 10-gauge Lilo at all, but the trick to getting this and, uh, without crushing it is to uh, pull down multiple times. I have found that if you go all at once with it, the hull can buckle. You don't want that to happen, so just take it easy. Go slow. All right, guys, here's our uh, pre-crimp. Nothing wrong with that at all. Looks great, nice and even all the way around. Ready to uh, give this its middle crimp, and I'll go ahead and try to actually close this crimp with the uh, middle crimp die. You can actually completely close this crimp, but it won't taper it. 
which is the whole point of using the crimp finisher. It's sort of like a got B and two, but it's a uh, OMB OMV brand. Go to the back station, and again, go slow with this. You don't want to buckle the hull. You can see how that's working. It creates a dome around the inside of the crimp. I apologize if that's out of focus. My camera just, I'm using an iPhone and they don't cooperate sometimes, but go a little bit more, try to close it. This is about all I can get. Sometimes they close, sometimes they don't. So I'm just gonna use the uh, crimp finisher that you're supposed to use. This is what it looks like. Again, it's basically a got BN2 or BN3 series. The BN series, but let's go ahead and uh, close that up. Well, guys, that's that. It's just that simple. You can see we have a pretty much perfect fit, uh, crimp on that right there. Looks great to me, and we are tapered. Pretty nice taper. It's just a great looking shell there. Deep set crimp. Looks factory to me. All right, we're going to do one more. This one's going to be a reload. Mech. 410 resize ring and I have a 3d printed kit I got off eBay to fold crimp 410 on a Lilo doll but just using the mech resize ring and the sizing ring extension that that kit comes with and resize like any other shell if I get got it lined up right all right we are resized to kick the shell back off grab the uh, primer Seating punch that the press comes, not the press, but that kit comes with. Push it out with the pre crimp station using a Lee resize ring that the Lee presses come with. It's late, guys. Brain's a little uh, mush right now, but deep prime like any other shell. And to re prime, just grab a Shadot primer or Preferably Fiocchi's if you have them, or Rio. These holes are, well, they have Euro size primer pockets because it's a Fiocchi. The Shadot primers, they almost want to go in by hand, but not quite. So, again, grab your resizing punch, and that's how that works. We are reprimed now. Apologize if you can't see me. Kind of in a tight spot right now. But again, we need 12 grains of Little Gun. Once again, the Clay Buster AA410 wad. Oops. I forgot that shell was roll crimp. If you look at the end of this, this one had a roll crimp on it, but that thing don't care. It'll fold it just fine. Four pellets of double lot buck. And again, this is true 33 cal double lot that I cast myself. Just tumbled and polished. Ready to, uh, for buffer. So the lead by itself, just the four pellets of double lot, is 0.47 on the scale of an ounce. So almost half ounce. With a buffer, it'll probably be 4849. So still under half ounce, but pretty much half an ounce. Total payload weight is 0.49. So again, still under half ounce, but pretty much half an ounce. And we'll grab our wad nudger or wad tamper and get that fiber cushion set down as an overshot card. Pre-crimp is formed. Easy. Try to close this one up. Looks like that one's gonna do it, actually. Yeah. It's pretty well closed. Let's give it a little bit more. We got it. That one's closed. Just for good measure, I went and had to hit it with the uh, crimp finisher. But guys, there is two four pellet double lot buck loads in two and a half inch 410. Pretty easy to put together. They go together fairly quick. Not as quick as, as if you had a Beck press, but I like the Lilo at all. So guys, this might be a pretty decent home defense load. It still is double lot buck, and it's still running about 1,200 FPS, so standard speeds, nothing crazy. Uh, four pellets, that's not bad at all. At home defense distance, those pellets are barely going to spread out at all unless you're using something like a Taurus Judge with a rifled barrel or Smith & Wesson Governor. The rifled barrel will help it spread out, but 
probably still not a whole lot at home defense distances, seven yards and in. Typically, I like my home defense loads to be about 1100 FPS. This is a little bit higher than that, but still, it's usable for home defense in my opinion. The benefits to using a 410 for home defense would be a lighter gun, less recoil, lower noise, faster follow-up shots, potentially less collateral damage, being a smaller payload. There's a lot of advantages to it, but there's also a bunch of disadvantages. You are giving up payload weight, or in this case, pellet count. You are giving up potential for really high velocity if you want to use high velocity for a home defense load. I don't suggest that, but you guys will do or should do whatever you feel is best. Double lot buck out of a 410, it will hit with the same amount of energy that a 12 gauge will or any other gauge that will hold double lot anyway if they're loaded to the same velocity, but they will do less damage simply due to the fact that you are again getting less pellets or less payload weight, but the energy per pellet will be the same if they're propelled to the same velocity. So let's use number four buck as an example here, which it's not a good fit for 410, but 32 gauge and up, it'll fit it. So number four buck propelled at let's say 1300 FPS. Each one of those pellets will have no more energy coming from a 32 gauge as it would say a 10, 12, or eight gauge. Again, propelled to 1300 FPS. There will be no difference in muzzle energy with buckshot, birdshot, TSS, steel, bismuth, anything that's a small pellet. It won't have any change in muzzle energy. It's still the same size shot going 1300. You do get more payload weight with the bigger gauges though. Where shotguns come into play with more muzzle energy is with slugs. This is the Ballistic Products DGS Thunderbolt slug, but just using that as an example. Muzzle energy will be greater out of larger gauges simply due to the fact that you can use bigger, heavier slugs. All of that muzzle energy is in one solid projectile, not spread out over multiple smaller projectiles, if that makes sense. Now that being said, you can get more muzzle energy pellet per pellet out of the larger gauges simply due to the fact that you can increase the muzzle velocity by a lot over small bores. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to do it for me. Please like and subscribe. We always appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. And if you want to, go check out our Patreon. It's as low as a dollar a month and you guys get early access to content. A link to that as well as a link to our Instagram and Rumble accounts will be in the description below. But other than that, you guys take it easy and we'll see you in the next one.